Hi. Tuscany Trail 2022, done and dusted. I'm back since a uh, little over a week. And this is my video sharing with you my thoughts, tips and tricks. So basically reviewing this whole bikepacking event. So Tuscany Trail, what is it? It's a yearly event. This year was the ninth time it had been organized. Uh, it's a bikepacking event in Tuscany. Uh, it's a ride from A to B. So this year we went from a small village called Castagneto Caducci and the finish was in Orbitello. Total track was uh, about 450 kilometers and we had close to 7,000 meters of elevation. So 7,000 meters of climbing along that course. The Tuscany Trail being an unsupported bikepacking event basically means you have to take care of yourself. The organization is not there to follow you with a team car or help you in case of a puncture. There are no feed stations, uh, so you have to take care of your own food, uh, your own drink, your own water, and also your own sleeping uh, arrangements. About the organization of the Tuscany Trail, you have to uh, register, of course, you have to sign up for the event. Um, usually that can be done somewhere early January, I believe. I actually registered in the first week of Jan this year. Um, the thing you have to do then is obviously pay. Uh, was around 80 euros uh, to participate, which I think is a, is a fair price. Um, and then you also have to hand in a medical certificate. Um, basically meaning you have to have your doctor or physician sign off on you being healthy. After registering and if your medical certificate is okay, uh, you will get uh, multiple uh, emails from the organization. Uh, one of course you're always looking for and you really want to get is the route itself. Um, about two, three months before the actual event we already got a preliminary route. Um, so you can get an idea and already have a look at, at, at the course itself and then the week before you will receive the final route uh, via Komoot. Uh, preparing for the Tuscany Trail, two things uh, come to mind. First of all, uh, how well should you be trained? Well, um, to give you an idea, I'm a very average cyclist. Um, I started cycling again in 2018, somewhere in October, November. Uh, I did a couple of laps, uh, but that's about it. And then gradually over the past couple of years, I've increased my kilometers. Um, and last year and the year before, I was you know, between seven and 8,000 kilometers uh, for a total year. And yeah, this might surprise you, but lots of it I actually did on Zwift. So biggest proportion of my training uh, or my cycling actually has been indoors and online completely different than what you would expect maybe from a uh, somebody who did a gravel and bikepacking event um, also on preparation um, i think everybody does this make a checklist uh, write down what you uh, want to bring uh, materials wise. Uh, I even made a checklist about my bike and the things I wanted to do beforehand. Uh, you know, new tires, uh, new chain and cassette, uh, have it uh, uh, go to the shop for a bit of maintenance, all that good stuff. And then also here is a tip, check your own checklists. This Muppet here, this guy, first thing he forgot was his sunglasses. Uh, you can see I'm now wearing the sunglasses I actually had to buy in Tuscany because I forgot to, I forgot to check my own checklist. About the uh, eating and drinking portion of the uh, Tuscany Trail, eating is quite simple. Mm, you basically pass a lot of uh, small villages, towns, uh, shops and especially nice little restaurants. Uh, we had some great food over there, from panini to lasagna to pasta and anything in between. The only thing I did bring and I thought it was very helpful was these uh, small energy bars I got from Decathlon. Uh, some sugary bars I could, uh, could have uh, as a, yeah, a, a small source of energy and something to eat in between. So b between breakfast and lunch have one or two of these bars because well, you do spend a lot of calories, of course. I think I was around average, yeah, at least a couple thousand uh, calories that you spend in a day. 
Um, so it's always good to have something with you, on you. So I did bring some energy bars, but the rest don't worry. There are plenty of restaurants or shops and you can get food anywhere. Same thing goes for drinks, uh, especially water. I was so pleasantly surprised with how easy it was to get water. There are um, these water points basically everywhere spread out throughout the lab in small villages uh, where you can get uh, drinking water. Uh, they are quite easy to find uh, as well. Some people looked them up beforehand. I didn't bother. Uh, they are quite easy to spot, <laughs> usually because there are also uh, multiple participants uh, actually uh, tapping water. So if you see a bunch of people uh, standing somewhere uh, filling their bidons, you know you're at the right location. So sleeping wise, uh, the tent worked out really great. Uh, I'll do a separate video as well on the uh, camping gear that I brought for the Tuscany Trail, but anyway. The good thing about the tent is you're so flexible. Let's say around the, the second half of the afternoon, we would start to think about, okay, where will we end up tonight? Is there a camping site nearby? Uh, do we want to use the tent? And sometimes we even got a hotel, uh, if that's what the, uh, what the location called for. Uh, we did a bit of wild camping as well, worked out fine too. Um, and this is also a tip, uh, there were a lot of participants who actually booked bed and breakfasts or hotels already beforehand. So they had to, on a given day, ride to that location. And it can be hot, it can be rainy, it can be anything. Um, sometimes we only did an average about of about 15 kilometers an hour. So before you know it, it's end of the day, you want to have a rest and you still need to do a couple hours to your hotel or bed and breakfast. So if, you, if I can give you a tip, don't book in advance. Uh, hotels are quite easy to find. Um, some smaller places maybe, yeah, you, you have to look around a bit, but don't worry about that. Um, don't over-organize it. Do your own thing. Uh, check in with yourself and the people you are with. Uh, are we tired? Do we want to look for a sleeping location yet or not? Do we want to continue? And don't worry, you'll find something. If I can give you a tip about the Tuscany Trail, one of them is don't be too ambitious when it comes to distance. Um, I think we did about 80 to 100 kilometers a day, which was more than enough for us to have a nice mix between being on the bike for six, seven hours, still being able to, <laughs> you know, sleep, eat and recover a bit and just enjoy, enjoy the company, enjoy the food, enjoy the scenery. So. I think that's one of my biggest tips. So in summary, should you do the Tuscany Trail? Hell yes, I'm gonna do it next year again. It was such a fun adventure. I'm almost home, but one final tip came to mind. Strap your stuff down. The amount of sandals, slippers, flip-flops, or whatever you want to call them, that got lost. <laughs> Incredible. So whatever you do, if you have stuff on the back, especially on your saddlebag, strap it down. Right, in case I forgot any, to mention anything, or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you've done the Tuscany Trail and you have your own experiences to share, please let us know. It would be fun to hear how you did it and what worked for you and what didn't. Thanks, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.